I now invite all who are able, please let us rise together. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Let us come into the light, the revealing and healing light of God.
Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us now join together in the prayer of the day which we find printed in our bulletin insert. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading for the fourth Sunday of Easter is from the fourth chapter of Acts. The next day their rulers elders and scribes assembled into Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, and Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners, Peter and John, stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, this Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read responsibly from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in the green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your God is death and evil. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second reading is from 1 John. We know love by this that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel. 
Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down in accord of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you o Christ. Christ. Please be seated. If you have not guessed by now, today is Good Shepherd Sunday. I know, we didn't have enough clues on that one. It is a time in the church year that we hear Jesus himself saying exactly who he is. And it might seem a little bit odd to us because, well, hey, let's face it. I don't know any sheep farmers. <laughs> well, I do know one who raises lambs, Pastor Barb, who used to be at the Methodist Church. She still raises those lambs out there. She used to tell me all kinds of stories about these things. I remember, especially during lambing season, whenever I would call her and talk to her, I would always hear a little, little voice coming from behind her. And I knew what had happened is that some of the little lambs weren't doing so well. So she would actually have them living in her kitchen. She would bring the straw in, she would make sure they had a place, and she would always feed them. And it was just like having a little baby. You always had to be up every couple hours to feed them. Kind of remind me of a story that I probably have shared before. It was about a pastor who, he had a lot of ranchers in his congregation. And especially during lambing season, well, if he wanted to see his congregation, he didn't go to church, he would have to go to their ranches because they were very busy. Life had to go on. And in fact, during that time of the year, in that season, life anew was coming, that a lot of their sheep would have lambs. And while he was talking to the one rancher, all of a sudden he just stopped. Because in the distance he saw not only the multitudes of sheep, but something he couldn't quite figure out. And finally he had to ask the rancher, what is going on there? And the rancher said, what do you mean? He said, is this a birth defect? And the rancher just looked at him and smiled and he said, Pastor, he said, what is it that uh, caught your eye? And he said, well, that lamb has two heads and has eight legs. And the rancher again smiled at the pastor and said, well, it's like this, preacher. You see that little guy there in, in birth, he lost his mother. And we went to take him to this other lamb who had given birth to a stillborn. Well, when we brought this lamb to this other mother, she wanted nothing to do with him. She rejected him. And so I took the stillborn and I skinned him and I placed him upon that other young lamb. And so when we put that other lamb in with that mother once again, well, she sniffed him. <laughs> And she knew that it was her own from that point on. And that he raised her, she raised him up. And that they are inseparable. You see, he said, preacher, that's kind of the way we figure it is with God. That by the blood of Christ, we are clothed in his righteousness. And therefore, we are able to come before God. 
that God claims us as his own sons and daughters. But it is all because what of our good shepherd has done for us. And that is the truth. That we are claimed by God. We are claimed by God in our baptisms. And it is a very personal thing. I mean, let's face it, whenever we come to this baptismal font for a baptism, or if we happen to be at the lake or by a, a body of water, when somebody is baptized, we have them presented to us. And if it's a little baby, it is the parents or the godparents. I present, at one point, John, someone presented you for baptism. And if we're an older adult, they themselves, with their godparents, would be presented to the congregation. It is by name that they are presented. And not only are they presented to the congregation, but most importantly, they are presented to God Almighty. And during the course of that baptismal celebration, we of course have prayers, we have readings, promises are made, but then when it comes time to truly baptize, I get to hold that little one over the water or I get to have that adult stand there. And once again, I say their name. John, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. What I'm saying is, John, God has come down to begin this relationship with you. That now you know the name of your God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is not some far away God, and you are not some number that He's got in His computer, but rather God knows you by name, and He calls you His beloved child from that point forward. But that could only happen because of the sacrifice of His Son on that cross. It is by that blood that you are made whole with Him. Now think about that. Sometimes I think we have a hard time really grasping that, really understanding that. And I've actually had some young people when we do confirmation or when I'm out and about, they will actually say to me, how do I know that God even cares about me? How do I even know that God knows who I am? And in today's society, I think that's a fair question. I mean, think about it. Just a few days ago was our favorite time of the year, April 15th. I know everybody wants to go out and pay their taxes on that day. I see people celebrating in the street. Yeah. There you go. And you know, every year I fill out my taxes, or my accountant does, and every year they're sent into the IRS. I would like to think at the IRS there's somebody who actually knows me by name and wants to look out for me. But I live in a real world. They only know me by my number. They don't even really know my name. And they certainly don't know me. State of Pennsylvania knows me by my driver's license number. They don't know me. I have a bank account. They know me by my account number. Not by my name. Certainly not by sight. I guess what I'm saying is in today's world, people know about you, but they do not know you. But God does. How do I know this? Well, this is how I answer the young people. I want you to sit down, and I want to take, you, take your hands, and I want you to look at your fingertips. I want you to know no one else has your fingerprints. That God made you uniquely divine in His own image, and He made you as one and only one. There is no other like you. God knows you because He created you. He made you special. And if you don't believe me, the eyes that you just used to look at those fingertips, nobody else has those either. There's a thing called facial recognition, but they use eye scanning. Big security thing now. That to get into the top secret places, they actually do a retinal scan because no one else in the world has your eyes. God created you so unique. And He did so because He knew that it was right for you. 
that God knows you. You are His child and He loves you. He loves you so much that He sent His Son into the world. Our great shepherd who three times in this gospel message tells us that I lay down my life for my sheep. I am not the hired hand. I'm not going to run away at the first sign of trouble. I'm not going to cave to the Pharisees, the scribes, to the chief priests, nor Rome itself. For I came to do the will of the Father. And that means that I lay my life down. No one can take it from me. I give it freely. And what I lay down, I can pick up once again. That I will die to redeem my sheep. In essence, God is saying, I love you. I love the uniqueness of each and every one of you. And I sent my son into this world to die so that you might live. That is how much I love you. And I know that you are not perfect and that's why he has come into this world. That as much as you love me and I love you, well, we have that chasm. That chasm of sin that separates us. But in my son, that will no longer exist. He is the bridge that spans between you and I. And I sent him because I know you and I love you. You see, that is what our Good Shepherd was trying to tell us. And yes, I know it's hard to believe some days, especially when we see everything that is going on around us, especially when we hear all of the news and all the negativity and all the hatred and everything else. But that's what brings me back to this 23rd Psalm. I remember reading somewhere about that portion where it says that he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. During World War I, there was a thing called trench warfare. And it was a nasty business. You basically dug trenches on either side and you would lob shells and grenades. You would fire machine guns and bombs would drop on you. And pretty much that's all you did. But there was a time during that war, around Christmas time, that those that would be considered enemies came together in their DMZ, the demilitarized zone, in between those two trenches. They both brought flags of truce. And on a door that was used as a makeshift table, they brought together what they had for food. And there they sat around that table, singing Christmas carols, remembering the Savior that came into the world. Though they were bitter enemies, they remembered what they had in common. And that was Christ the Lord. And so, as it is told to us, in the presence of my enemies, I will prepare a table for you. You see, God, even in the midst of all this chaos that's going on, even in the midst of what we consider to be evil, God is still there. And God is preparing the way for you. Why? Because you are His beloved child. Because He loves you. Because He will do everything and anything that it takes. Even to lay down His own life so that you might live. That is our Good Shepherd. That is the one that I follow. That is the one that I strain to hear His voice. That is the one who tells us that yes, that He has a flock, but there are others that He wants to bring into the fold. And how is that going to happen? Well, that's where we come. Because we know the voice of our Shepherd, we hear Him, and He says, go out and make disciples of all people. And though therefore, we do not need to fear. For wherever He sends us, we know that He goes with us. Wherever we go, we know that we have our Good Shepherd. That His rod and His staff will protect us. That there is nothing that can stand up against the power of God. And therefore, since God is with us, we need not fear. 
And so we go out into this world and share this good news. We go out into this world and let people know about our Good Shepherd. Our Good Shepherd who was sent into the world not because we are perfect, not because we do everything right, but precisely because we don't. That our Good Shepherd gives us what we don't deserve instead of giving us what we truly deserve. It is by that body and blood that we will once again receive that we remember how much God loves us and how much our Good Shepherd has done for us. And that is why we remember and celebrate this day especially. Our Good Shepherd who came to lay down His life so that we might live. conservation organizations, and all people entrusted with the task of caring for creation, that we may be better stewards of the world around us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Almighty God, lead nations and communities to share resources, cooperate in solving conflicts, and listen to the wisdom of indigenous peoples. Help all those with power to share it and to show to you such power for good. God of grace, hear our prayer. 
Loving God, to protect the very young and the very old, those living without housing, victims of domestic abuse, and all who live with chronic illness or compromised immune systems. Guide communities to actively care for people who are vulnerable. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, help this and all communities of faith to listen for your voice. Call us away from things that distract us from following you. Invite us to be to more deeply love and serve people who are lonely, isolated, and on the margins. God of grace, hear our prayer. Living God, we give thanks for our ancestors in faith. Strengthen us to share the good news in our own day. God of grace, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, it is only because of our Good Shepherd that we may approach your throne and that we may ask, Father, that you bring healing and wholeness to those that we will name out loud. We pray, Father, for comfort and guidance for those who are in need. But most of all, Father, we pray for your presence in the lives of those that we now name. Father, we lift up to you Eloise, Fran, Sue, Dick, Betty Sue, Hazel, Vera, Grady, Michelle, Mervyn, Madeline, Mary, Mike, Kathy, Matthew, Susan, Bill, Evelyn, Susie, Walter, Maria, Elizabeth, Vienna, Kathy Joy, Natalie, Karen, Tammy, Damon, Sandra, June, Sam, Sally, Phil, Pat, Marlene, Alan, Elaine, Veda, Betty, Linda, Dar, Bob, Elizabeth, Bensi, Rosa, Sharon, Connie, Rick, Roger, Lucas, Wendy, Kim, Tom, Marge, Cindy, Dottie, Brayden. We pray for Kristen. We pray for Ashley and her family. Father, we pray for Susan and her upcoming surgery. And we pray, Father, that it goes exceedingly well. So much so that you would eradicate this cancer, that it may never come back again. And Father, we pray that she no longer has to undergo any other treatments, that she can with joy give thanks to you for all things. And Father, we pray for the Fuller family as they mourn their loss. We pray, Father, that you be with them even in this darkness. Let your light shine through. Let them hear again your words of hope and promise that as we've been baptized into a life and death like Christ, we are most assuredly baptized into a resurrection like His. Let them hear your words. Let them feel your arms around them. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. And now, may the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us greet one another in that same peace.
us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising had brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all of its creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share in this heavenly food, this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
stand. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared the table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen.